This is the feedback from the most recent nursing research quiz. First off, a lot of points were lost because people weren't careful when cutting and pasting or they didn't read the question on the online version. Answers were offered, often entered for the wrong question. Yes, there is a lot of duplication in the questions on the quiz. They're intended to help you look at all aspects of the concept. Next, let me emphasize the need to write your answers in simple terms. The instructions say to write them so a high, a high schooler could understand them. Well, some of you succeeded in this and some didn't. A BSN graduate should be able to understand a research article and disseminate it to others. That includes aides, techs, LPNs, and others with less formal education. Also, by breaking a concept down into, down into very simple terms, you can come to better understand it yourself. When asked about the results, look at the data. What was it about the results, the numbers themselves, that indicate the strength of the relationship or whether it was a positive or negative relationship, etc. Look at the core of each question. What is it asking? Some of you identified something, what something was not. Your statement may be true, but that didn't answer the question. Look carefully at the question. I can tell that some of you didn't download and look at all of the handouts. Some of the answers are spelled out in them. Some questions, like number eight, include two things to address. In this case, you needed to address R equals 0.50 and P is less than 0.01. Each of these tells you something different about the results. If you didn't address both parts, you couldn't earn full credit. When discussing hypotheses, you need to specify whether you are addressing the research hypothesis or the null hypothesis. Otherwise, your answer was confusing and ambiguous and you couldn't get credit for it. Probability and significance. For interpreting P is less than 0.01 and P is less than 0.05, go back to the handout. You want to know if what you're seeing is due to random chance or whether there really is a relationship or a difference or a correlation, etc. The researcher decides prior to collecting the data whether the 0.01 or 0.05 level will be used. The handout discusses this in greater detail. If P turns out to really be less than 0.05, and that's the lever level the researcher chose, the chance that, that random chance is the cause for the finding is less than 5%. In other words, there's a greater than 95% chance that a correlation or a difference or a relationship really exists. Remember, a finding is significant or it is not. It's an either or thing, no in-betweens. Per Burns and Groves, there are no degrees of significance. Something cannot be strongly or weakly significant. It either is or it isn't. That's it. If it's deemed to be non-significant, then any differences that you see between the groups or correlations or relationships don't really exist in terms of research or a statistical point of view. A weak correlation that is found to be non-significant may suggest a correlation but according to the data, it doesn't really exist. On to the t-test. Remember, a t-test is used to compare two groups and to determine if the two groups are significantly different. An independent t-test 
is used if the two groups are not related. This is the apple and oranges. Remember, this refers to the samples, not characteristics of the samples. Examples of when an independent t-test would be appropriate to use. Experimental versus control groups. Males versus females, assuming that we're not talking about husbands and wives. Students at University X versus students at University Y. Yes, they're both university students, but they're coming from two different populations. Remember, there's no relationship between these two groups. A dependent or paired t-test is used when there's some relationship between two groups. A frequently seen model is pre- and post-test scores. Yes, there's only one sample of people here. But there are two different groups of scores. You want to see if individual scores are different on the group level. Each individual's pre- and post-test scores are paired up, then the data for the entire group is analyzed. A second example is the weight of mothers versus the weight of daughters. You could use this in analyzing family weight trends. Each mother and daughter's data is paired up, then the data for the entire group is analyzed.